about here. Well, right now we don't have anybody yet, but I, I, I don't, I, I can't, it can't be empty when it starts. So mm -hmm. I'll let you. It doesn't show on my Facebook that you, that it started. And Chef Bob is going to do his interact, some interaction on, on there as he's talking to. All right, Chef D, we have four people at the moment. So, guys, if you're watching, thank you so much for joining in. We're going to get started here in just a second. We're giving people just a couple minutes to jump in. Yeah, we're going to just wait and, and let some other people come. So we don't have to start over. So as soon as we hit 10, we're going to get started. That's going to be the magic number. I'm so excited. So how many have we got now, camera operator? We are at seven at the moment. All People right. are joining. Chef, what are we having tonight? Oh. Uh, tonight we're having the pan roasted airline chicken breast with asparagus melanese. And I bet you guys are wondering what in the world is melanese? Well, you're about to find out. Well, I know I've had your cooking and I'm excited. <laughs> All right, Chef D. Okay, you see Chef Bob? so good to be here with you all uh, this evening and uh, this is our first cooking segment so I'm pretty excited uh, I'm actually tired of being in the house and I love being in the house so uh, I hope everyone let us know who will be cooking along with us uh, I would love to know who's actually cooking with me and if you can at the end of the segment please make sure to take a picture of your presentation. I'm going to do a presentation. Uh, Chef Bob is going to be joining us soon and you'll see, see him, you should see him coming up pretty soon and he'll be cooking with us as well. So uh, so yeah, please make sure you take some photos for us so we can post those. All right, um, so let's go ahead and get started. If you have those recipes, we're going to start with uh, the airline chicken breast. and. Uh, hold on, I think Chef Bob is chiming in now. Are you there, sir? Okay. All right. Everybody look for you once you get logged in. But it's good to have you. Uh, uh, Chef Bob will be logging in, and he'll take, actually, he's going to take you guys' questions. And uh, so I'm looking forward to that. And uh, Jason, if you can also let me know uh, the activity, what's going on. So uh, just let's start by calling out a few names. Who do we have watching? We have a Caroline. Hey, Caroline. A Bonnie. Hey, Bunny. The whole Fisher family. Fishers. <laughs> Latina, woo. <laughs> my mom, Kay. Hey, my mom, Kay. Tom. Tom, what's going on, man? And I'm curious to know where they're calling from, where they're watching from, what, where, where in the country. We would love to know where everybody's from. So if you can sound off your city and state, we would love that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, but listen, let me say this before I start. I normally don't use recipes, okay? Uh, I normally just cook off of taste, flavor, and sight. But this evening, we are working with professional chefs, and we're working with home cooks. 
So I, I'm going to get better about recipes. Um, I know when I'm baking, and Chef Bob will tell you guys, when you're baking, you have no shortcuts. You have to follow the recipe to the T. So uh, this evening, you'll see some things that are familiar to the recipe. And there will be some things that I just found in my cooler that I'm going to add to the recipe. And that's the cool thing about savory recipes. You can just become inventive. Some of the best uh, dishes are just uh, are made up at the last moment. Okay? So, as I stated in the recipe, we're going to start by first seasoning uh, the airline chicken breast. And I, I've already got this question over and over again. What is airline chicken breast? Well, simply, it describes the bone in uh, of a chicken breast. So basically, as you can see here, uh, I butcher this chicken from a whole chicken. And the tip that I, the cost-saving tip that I would give you guys, learn how to butcher your own meat. Uh, so much cheaper that way. So I purchased a whole chicken, and basically what I did, uh, I left the wing connected to the breast, as you can see here. And so in doing that, that just gives it a nice presentation. You find this in fine dining restaurants and upscale hotels. And typically they slide a little small chef hat right here on the bowl, just for fancy. Just, I may get in trouble from the culinary community, but just for a reason to charge you more extra dollars for your chicken entree. Okay. All right, don't ban me, Chef Bob. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and season this. And how we're going to do that to ensure that we get a nice browning and a nice roasting off the breast. I have the tarragon, is what I'm chopping now. So you want to get a nice chop there. And then we're going to go ahead and add that to the butter that I've already melted ahead of time. And that's going to be your herb, your herb butter. Uh, I'm using unsalted butter, so I'm just going to hit it with a little salt and pepper. So it doesn't matter, you can do unsalted or salted butter. Depends on your preference. And we're going to go ahead and brush uh, the chicken breast with the butter. and. Feel free to season however you see fit. Whatever you have at home, it's totally up to you. This is where you can be a little flexible with the recipe. I have a seasoning blend that I've created uh, that consists of uh, lemon pepper, uh, dry oregano, dry basil, and dry thyme, along with uh, lemon, lemon pepper. So we're gonna use a little bit of this as well. Okay, next, let's go ahead and get your oven preset on 450 and let that oven preheat, okay? What we're gonna basically do is what we call a two, uh, a two part cooking method. We're gonna do a pan sear and then we're gonna roast in the oven. So at the same time while you are preheating your oven, go ahead and, and turn on your, your flame. I love gas, but it worked just as fine with electric. Um, you want to pan sear uh, on about a medium flame. Uh, I prefer a high flame. I wouldn't recommend that to you guys, especially if you're cooking on electric. So uh, while your pan is heating, we want to start olive oil in the pan. And listen guys, if you have any questions as I'm going, and I'm moving too fast, let me know. And the team here will most definitely chime in. Um, or Chef Bob will have the answers for you guys as well. Uh, we have a lot of chefs that are in the room. How many guests do we have so far? We're up to 26, and I know we have at least a couple of chefs. Okay. Chef Tom has been leaving a lot of notes as well. Good, well Chef Tom, you can most definitely uh, chime in and uh, let everyone know as, as I go along uh, why we do what we do. 
so, chicken breast, uh, with this particular chicken breast, I left on the skin. And I know we're in a day and time where we're, we're thinking about our health. Uh, but we most definitely also want to think about uh, drying, we don't want to dry out the chicken breast. Uh, this is a part, unlike the thigh, the thigh has a lot of fat, so a lot of moisture is present. Chicken breast does not. So I left the skin for a nice uh, crispy uh, barrier, but also it's going to help keep the, the chicken breast nice and moist because some of the fat is going to render. Uh, and when you hear me say render, I'm, I'm basically talking about the fat separating right into the meat. Okay, so I'm gonna check my skillet. And typically, I just like to hover my hand over the pan uh, or until there's a smoke point. Chef D, we had one uh, person whose phone cut out. What goes in the pan first? What type of oil is that again? Okay, olive oil is in the, in the pan, but we also had to create a fat barrier on the chicken breast itself with the herb butter. Uh, because that's going to also ensure the, gold, the goldenness uh, of the presentation once it comes out. Um, I'm adding olive oil because if I don't, what's going to happen, the butter, can in, anyone tell me, a non-chef, tell me what would happen if I add the chicken to the pan without the olive oil? Do we have any of the Jeopardy music? So we're going to wait for that answer. You are running about 10 seconds ahead of the actual Facebook feed, so it'll take just a moment. Okay, okay. Do we have any answers yet? The butter will burn. Yes, who said that? Uh, Steve Caroli. He's not a chef, is he? Uh, it does not say. It just says Steve, Stephen C. Caroli. The okay. butter will burn. <laughs> well, I'm giving you guys a hard time because, you know, uh, we do. We, we, you know, we cook for a living professionally, and we learn all the science, the reason why things do what they do. But you know, we have cooks at home, mothers, grandmothers, that has cooked for generations, and you know, I, I wanted to take this time. <laughs> and allow us all to come together and just enjoy uh, food, especially from wherever you guys are from. Uh, so did we get a sound off on where people are from, cities? Uh, we did, so we've got them from California, from Alabama, um, from Canandaigua. Missouri. Missouri. We got some from Missouri. And hey. by the way, yes, Chef or Steve is a chef. Ah, he, didn't, he must didn't hear that he was uh, not included in that question. <laughs> but yes, we want to most definitely um, uh, prevent the uh, chicken from burning. So, Pensacola. Pensacola, Florida now as well with Chef yeah. Bob. Yeah, that's Chef Bob. So now we're going to go ahead and add the chicken breast. And the heat is where we want it to be. And how many are actually cooking with me? I would love to know that. Well, we got Kansas City, we got Kansas as well now. Kansas! Overland Park, Kansas. Wow, that's a big reach. Okay, so based on uh, right now cook time, it's really based on the size of your chicken breast. Uh, I have a uh, anywhere from six to seven ounce uh, bone-in chicken breast, so it's going to take me anywhere from 11 to uh, 15 minutes, just because it's on the bone. Uh, I recommend that you, uh, from a cost standpoint, you you keep bone in your protein as much as possible, because you got to realize that's where your flavor is most impacted. Uh, in that bone is the marrow, and that marrow houses the, the root of the flavor of the protein. Um, so yeah, what you can do 
after you're done, don't even throw their bones away. Save them for chicken stock. Uh, you can add some carrots, celery, uh, you can add some fresh herbs, and you can make your own, your own stock. So these are great uh, tips for, for saving on cost. Um, also, another way to save in cooking, you want to have a fairly decent stock pantry. So every time you go to the grocery store, you should be just only purchasing uh, proteins and fresh vegetables. That way you should already have on hand your flour, your sugar, uh, your seasonings, things like that. So we're going to let this. Chef, we have quite a few people that are cooking, but I'm also supposed to tell you that your sister Bonnie is the one that's from Alabama. Whoop, 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 whoop. Birmingham, Alabama in the house, 205. <laughs> okay. All right, let me be a little more sophisticated. <laughs> um, so I'm so glad to, to know that everyone uh, from all walks of life is joining us today. <laughs> but uh, so it's time to, to flip the chicken. Okay. And this is what you guys want to look for. That's the color. Man, I feel sorry for you guys that's not cooking because the smell is awesome. Uh, let's see. Is there any questions anybody's asking? Not yet. Not at the moment. Yeah, if anyone has any questions, please share, share your questions with us. Uh, Chef Bob is actually online. Uh, we can't hear him right now. A bit of uh, technical difficulty. Uh, Facebook no longer allows you to um, invite someone in to speak uh, with the host. So uh, he's there as a resource. And we're most definitely going to continue doing this this week. Uh, but most definitely, if you all have any questions for me pertaining to food, uh, I would love, love to take those. Okay, now that while the chicken is going, we can go to our potatoes. Um, I prefer Yukon Gold potatoes uh, just because they're naturally uh, buttery. So, but it doesn't matter what kind of potatoes you have. Uh, the good part about what we're doing, we're just showing you uh, ingredients that you can create a chef-driven meal right at your home. And to tell you guys a little bit more about why I chose this dish, uh, mainly this time of year, uh, we, we, we like to shop uh, seasonally. And what that means, you find the best products and the best cost-effective uh, proteins and vegetables per season. So right now, we know it's when you start seeing asparagus, uh, especially large asparagus, white asparagus, it's springtime. Um, and uh, also, uh, we are in the beginning season of, of eggs. Did you know that spring is the, lar is the number one season for uh, chickens to lay eggs? So just a little fact there. And uh, that's, that's why we are doing this dish. And we're going to top it off with a uh, sunny side up egg. And uh, again, this dish is inspired by the spring. Now I know, as I've already heard, ugh, yuck, sunny side egg. Camera guy, I'm not going to mention any names. But, um, you know, you have to try things. Be inv adventurous. Uh, you know, the biggest thing is to be knowledgeable. You know, read about this stuff yourself. Try something new outside of, of, of your uh, upbringing. I was raised in Birmingham, Alabama, uh, slash Alabaster. And you can't get any countryer than Alabaster. And so you can call me city country. And uh, so my, my upbringing was comfort food, soul food. Uh, chitlins. I had no clue what chitlins were when I was a kid. You just ate what was in front of you. 
Uh, but as soon as I found out what chitlins were, yeah, I stopped eating chitlins. But, uh, you know, cooking, cooking for me is a melting pot. Um, not only my background, but other cultures. And, uh, you know, I really enjoy, uh, you know, cooking different, different cultures. So, what we're going to do now, we're going to go ahead and season our potatoes. Uh, this is how I cut my potatoes because I, I'm thinking about my presentation when I go to plating. And then plus, they're going to cook up pretty fast. We're going to pan fry these. But right now I'm going to season them, salt and pepper. And my dry herb mixture. Any other questions that I have? No, sir, not at the moment. Okay. So now, at this point, while I got the uh, chicken seasoned, I'm going to go ahead and go into the oven. And through the magic of Facebook Live, we have one already ready. And what you want to do here with your chicken breast, once it comes out, you want to let it rest um, and let it sit. And the reason why you want that to happen, just so it can retain its juices. Uh, again, chicken breast is kind of temperamental. So you don't want to slice it immediately because otherwise all the juices are going to run out. Okay? So I cheated a little bit. You may still be working on your chicken breast, but uh, um, the total cooking time for your chicken breast should run anywhere between uh, five and ten minutes. Okay? So you want to start another saute pan. Uh, two teaspoons of olive oil. We want to let that heat up. Uh, we do have a question now. Okay. Tammy's asking, does it matter what kind of pan you use? Stainless steel, cast iron, question mark. Well, pretty much this, this dish I'm, uh, I'm putting together requires saute, high, high heat. So we want to use a pan that's, that's nonstick. Um, but if you notice, I'm using uh, olive oil, so uh, you're fine with uh, a non-stick pan, or you want to make sure that your pan is evenly uh, coated with olive oil. So good question, um, but be careful not, if you're going to use non-stick, just be careful not to scrape the bottom of your brand new expensive non-stick pan. I hate that. So, same, same theory here. We're testing for hotness of the skillet. And once that gets hot enough, we're gonna add our potatoes. While our chicken, can you guys see the chicken breast here? Not currently in the shot. Okay. That's my finished chicken breast. And what I want to do, that go back to that same herb butter and give it a nice, There you go. Okay. So we're gonna sit chicken breast right here. So I'm gonna put a potato in just for a, a temperature taste. So it's not quite as hot as I want. So basically what I did with potato I blanched the potato, and it probably say that in the recipe as well. I blanched the potato for about two minutes just to get it halfway tender. Um, so it's, it's, this is not a completely raw potato. Uh, so what that does, that 
that cuts down my, my cooking time. So uh, I like a nice even brown color on my potatoes and that's what we're trying to achieve. So we're gonna go ahead and add a little more. And listen, I know home cooks, I gotta pick with you for a minute. If you hear that sizzling, don't run away from the pan because you're afraid of getting burned. That's how you get burned. But I can't tell you how many times in my life that I've gotten burned, cut. It's, it's just gonna happen, especially if you're in the kitchen. You're getting props on the color of the chicken. Good. It's gorgeous. Who, it says who said Tom, Tom Dickinson. Chef Tom. Tom, what's going on, man? Good to see you. <laughs> so, you know, guys, we just, we're being creative during this time of quarantine. Um, you know, the food industry right now is down. Um, more people are at home cooking. So I think more of us as chefs, you know, we need to take to the internet and take advantage of this time to help families get through and enjoy themselves while they're at home with easy recipes. Um, that's not so intimidating, uh, but cost effective and very flavorful. So thank you, T Tom, for, uh, for chiming in. Appreciate that. Stephen did ask, it says, give the camp chefs out there ideas to prepare this in bulk for buffet service. At my camp, we use two-inch hotel pans. We rarely do plated presentation. Correct. And, and that's what we do here. We, you know, we do a buffet presentation. So, you know, this can still be done um, in, uh, in a buffet format. Um, I would say we probably don't want to put airline chicken breasts on uh, the buffet line, uh, raises your food costs, but uh, anywhere from a, a four ounce, uh, five ounce, uh, chicken breast would be fine. Uh, but yeah, good question, man. That was a good question. Okay, can you guys see here in the pan? Not overly well. So right now your chicken should be in the oven and you should be working on your potatoes. And the biggest part about cooking, you wanna to try to do more things than one. You know, timing is everything uh, when, when you're cooking. And so, uh, you know, as I'm working on the potatoes, I know that the chicken is in the oven. So this is the color that we're looking for. So we're gonna let that go a few more moments. <clears throat> I'm gonna check on my chicken brush. Okay, so now I'm gonna start thinking about my plating, right? Oh, there is a new question that came in. Okay. Um, Benita asked, why add more seasoned butter to the already cooked chicken when the brush touched the raw chicken? <laughs> okay, good question. Um, actually, that is, I'm glad you guys caught that. That's a mistake. You're not supposed to cross contaminate. So thank you very much. And who was that? <laughs> so I really appreciate that. Sta um, staff's mom. <laughs> so it's, it's best to have, uh, to have two brushes. Um, but the reasoning for brushing the chicken breast is to keep it moist as it rests. But you most definitely want to have uh, two brushes so uh, you don't have that problem or cross-contamination. Thank you very much for that one. Bad chef. Bad chef. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so now what I want to do before I plate the potatoes 
I'm going to set them on a, a paper towel. Just so we can drain the excess oil. Okay, any other questions? Well, Chef Bob has a suggestion. He says, Chef, I would line a two inch hotel with those potatoes and shingle the chicken breast to each side, then asparagus down the middle. Good. Chef Bob, are you talking about the final presentation? I'm assuming that's what he's suggesting. And I'll tell you guys a little bit more about Chef Bob. Chef Bob, I'll give you a thumbs up on the answer, by the way. Good. Uh, Chef Bob, of course, many of you know who he is in the industry. This guy is phenomenal. Uh, he's been a mentor to me as a young culinarian coming up uh, in our profession. He's, um, you know, he's a he's a great uh, savory cook uh, and a great savory uh, um, sauce maker, soups, and baker. The guy does everything. So he really gave me a great model to follow. And he's become not only a, a mentor, but a friend and a brother uh, to me. And so uh, I just want to give Chef Bob his props, you know, uh, for what he's done for the industry. He's also uh, sits on the board of uh, Christian Chefs International, uh, an organization uh, for chefs um, that are interested in having a, a close relationship uh, with the Lord. And that's something too, you know, that that's dear and near to my heart. Um, you know, this profession has given me a lot. It's given me a, a lot of support, of uh, uh, spiritual family, and this is what we're about here at Laterno. Um, we're on a, we're on a mission uh, to minister uh, to groups and uh, campers here at Laterno. So please learn more about who we are and our mission statement. Uh, there on our Facebook uh, page, so I most definitely uh, would appreciate that. And um, you know, we're going to only get better. This is our first, uh, our first cooking segment. And if you notice, there is there should be a donation coin uh, right there on uh, the page uh, that you're viewing. Um, so please feel free to donate um, whatever comes across your mind to help us continue uh, producing contents like this okay so now we're gonna we're gonna finish this and I know it's not in the recipe but you may want a sauce for for your chicken so we're gonna take the same skillet where we originally seared the chicken Brass, so we're going to take the drippings and we're going to make a pan sauce from, from the drippings, okay? So we're going to get that going. And as that, that pan heats up, uh, we're going to also get ready to do the egg. Now, it's up to you. You can add the egg or you can leave it off. It's totally up to you. But right now, I want to show you guys how to make a quick sauce from the pan drippings. Uh, is Bunny still with us? I believe so, yes sir. So I was going to say, this is basically like we, what we grew up on in the country. We, uh, when we make gravy, and uh, let's say if you fry pork chops, you take the pork chops out, and from what's left over, we call it, the fancy term is called fun, but uh, in the country, just called making gravy. So, you know, we always try to make everything sound fancy. Okay, so we got that nice and heated. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to add uh, some chicken stock. And if you don't want to use chicken, chicken stock, 
You can do a turkey stock uh, if you wish, um, or even a vegetable stock. It's totally up to you. So I don't know if you guys can see this, but we're gonna let this bubble and reduce down. Again, this is not in your recipe, but this is just a quick way to, to make a sauce uh, for your dish. Okay, so I also want to remind you guys, those that are cooking, if you can take pictures of your dish, I would love to post uh, the finished product uh, on our website. So as we go along doing this, um, that would really, uh, really be nice to see what everyone's style is. You know, everyone's style is different, so I'm not expecting you guys to play like a chef does, but uh, I want to see some presentation. Um, and you can actually send me those to uh, my email. And my email address is chefdeandre at live.com. That's chef, C-H-E-F-D-A-N-D-R-E at live.com. So I look forward to, to seeing those, and I will certainly post those. Okay. So now as the liquid is reducing, we're going to fold in some cold butter. You're getting a lot of looks great, looks delicious. Can't wait to eat it. <laughs> so we want to just swirl that cold butter in. And what's going to happen is going to slowly uh, tighten. And you're done. Sauce is done. Uh, I may hit it at the very end with a little uh, acid, lemon juice just to give it a little more tang. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do, just add a little uh, lemon juice. But you wanna swirl the butter until it melts. And that's what you're looking for, okay? It's not a heavy sauce, it's just a nice, uh, nice frothy sauce for a finish. Okay, so now the sauce is ready. We're going to set that aside. Okay, you guys let me know where you are. Chicken, how's your chicken? How your potatoes look? Because now, I'm about to start cooking my asparagus. Yes, sir. Chef, Chef Tom is wondering if you would ever use heavy whipping cream to help emulsify. Well, I normally do, Chef, but you know, I'm thinking about our general public that's health conscious. Um, so, so yes, that's, that's also an alternative. You can use heavy cream uh, to tighten your sauce quickly. Um, and then you can actually build on that. You can actually saute mushrooms and fold in some mushrooms and have a nice mushroom cream sauce. But the biggest thing is I want you guys to take advantage of the fun, basically the drippings from your protein uh, in your sauces. So what, what we've been doing in this dish is we've been layering flavors, okay? This is a very humble dish, but it's, it's also a uh, very flavorful as well. So the asparagus are next. The fishers are asking what are the ingredients for the sauce again? Uh, the ingredients for the sauce. So the same skillet that you uh, seared your chicken breast in is where you want to start making your sauce. So uh, we first deglaze the pan with chicken broth to basically uh, move everything around that's at the bottom of the pan. And uh, then we want to uh, deglaze your pan with the chicken broth, and then you're gonna add your butter, cold butter. Uh, and once you add your cold butter, just go ahead and cook your heat off. And you're just gonna kinda swirl the pan until the butter has melted. And like uh, the other chef suggested, you can add heavy cream to let it reduce, 
uh, down. It doesn't take much, and uh, that will also tighten your sauce. But today we're going to do basically a broth uh, sauce, and uh, at the very end, just a little lemon juice. So chicken broth, butter, and lemon juice. Okay, I hope that helped. Okay, so now we're going to start with uh, the asparagus. Now one thing about the asparagus, I've already pre-blanched the asparagus um, and basically all that is I'm, I'm steaming and then I'm shocking the asparagus in ice water to stop the cooking process so I can maintain the, the integrity of the asparagus, nice and green and vibrant. So we don't need to be uh, in a skillet no longer than three minutes at best. So we're gonna go ahead and plate the asparagus. And the potatoes. Um, Darlene says that she is ready for asparagus cooking. Is where <laughs> she is. Okay. So I have my potatoes down. Next, I want to go down with my asparagus. Okay, so now the the final component, we're going to uh, add butter for our egg. Tammy mentioned that she likes to get a nice char on her asparagus. Yeah, you know, it's totally up to you uh, when it comes to asparagus. Everyone has their own preference. Uh, you can grill them. They're, they're pretty versatile. You can grill them. You can saute them. Um, it's totally up to you. Um, but they. They most definitely pair well with uh, lemon juice. Okay. So, now I'm going to add the egg with butter. And again, the egg is totally up to you, it's, it's your preference. Okay, can you guys see the presentation in presentation here? Okay. So we're gonna add the egg and the sauce for the chicken and we'll be done. Do we have any other questions out there? Um, Davina had asked a question about um, kind of thickening the sauce, but your friend Chef Tom helped answer that about okay. adding cornstarch and water. Good. Good. And for those that are gluten free, uh, this entire recipe is most definitely gluten free, but you can most definitely use cornstarch for those of you uh, that cannot have flour due to uh, gluten.
Okay, and to finish this dish off, we're gonna top it off with uh, Parmesan cheese. We have people excited that this dish is gluten-free. And there you are. You have a roasted chicken with asparagus and roasted potatoes. And this is your uh, chicken melanese. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, like I said, it's a great dish. Um, and again, you can substitute the egg if you like. Um, but I most definitely encourage you guys to, to shop and eat during the season where you can find uh, items that's affordable and at a great cost. So, I hope you all enjoyed uh, this evening cooking segment. We're gonna improve on this as we go along. So again, thank you very much. Chef DeAndre signing off.